So hi everyone, thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Rafael, you can call me Rafa for short. Uh, you can find me on Twitter by that handle and I'm software engineer at, at Tasker. So yeah, today I'm gonna to talk about a little bit uh, of the secret breaker pattern. What is that uh, and how we can use that in Ruby using secret box. So to get started, uh, let's talk about remote calls, right? So remote calls are a crucial part of our systems. Uh, whenever we need to fetch some data from our in another system, or maybe um, update some data, create some record, delete, whatever. Where, whenever we need to interact to, to an external service, uh, we do remote calls, right? And this service, this external service may be within our domain, another service in our company, but can also be like an external service. I don't know, a GIF, API, whatever. And, but also these point, points of um, external calls, they are also points of failure in our applications because whatever happens to those calls bubbles up to our application and it, well, we have, we have to handle the errors sometimes, the errors may like bubble up to our clients and well, our answer, the answer of our system depends on the answer of these systems, right? So the more crucial or more critical uh, is the system that we depend on, the more significant impact of its failures generate and propagates in our systems, right? So uh, while an error here and there is tolerated and maybe we want to treat it or uh, handle it and provide a, a useful output to our users. Uh, what happens if like one of our uh, APIs that we depend on is degraded, right? What happens if that's always returning a timeout, for example? So whenever you call it, uh, it like, I don't know, uh, have a timeout of a minute and after a minute request timeouts and while well, we return a maybe a 500 or whatever error that's too small, that, that uh, state of failure. Uh, that gets complicated when we are in a, that, in, when our API that we are consuming is in, the, in a degraded state, because then it propagates to our application as well. So if we have a lot of quest, uh, requests in our application coming through and we uh, follow th those to the uh, degraded service, we'll be like uh, as is low as that service at least. So uh, we are always waiting the request for in an example of a timeout, we will always be waiting for that request to timeout and just to return an error. And we know that's an error because of that service uh, is uh, down, for example. So that's pretty bad. Uh, and also that can lead to a catastrophic scenario. In the case where we have um, a chain of service depending on each other. So if one failed in a very low level, uh, it can bubble up to all, uh, a new, a various service and applications that can they can all like suffer the impact of that failed, failed state. While that's not like maybe the common scenario, uh, it may happen, right? And maybe your situation. So what is, what is circuit breaker? Uh, the circuit breaker, uh, and I don't know why that emoji is there, but anyway, uh, the circuit breaker <laughs> pattern is a software design pattern that proposes monitoring these remote calls and keeping track of the fa failed ones. So after we, we, we hit a certain error rate, uh, this circuit will open and skip all the following requests. And it will skip all the following requests during a sleep window. So it will kind of like sleep and skip all the following requests. And that when, when that uh, sleep window expires, it will try to reach back to the uh, external service and see what happened. Uh, if, it got, if it gets an uh, error again, then the, re the secret remains open. But otherwise, if it noticed that the API started uh, responding accordingly, uh, it will close the secret and enable the main flow uh, to happen. Uh, so if we would summarize the states of the, the circuit breaker, 
in a picture would be like that. It starts with the circuit closed. Whenever we reach the fatal threshold, we open the circuit. We then fire up the sleep window. When that expires, we can have this half open state where you try to, to reach out to the user or the, the, the downstream service. And if that request succeed, goes back to closed. If that's a failed request, goes to open. In reality, the states of what uh, wires we have and how that works depending on the, the implementation that you do of that pattern. But yeah, you can, you can only have like, for example, the closed one and open, and when it spies, go back to close, for example. Uh, thankfully, uh, we have uh, loads of implementations of this pattern available for many uh, languages, for example, Golang, Java, Ruby as well. And one of the implementations that I've used in the past was secret blocks, which is a, a Ruby gem for uh, uh, using secret breaker in, well, in Ruby. And it's very configurable and you, you have uh, an option to plug in uh, different uh, HTTP clients and all sorts of clients that you may be using. So I'll quickly run through an example uh, and all the code is available in this repo. So you can uh, look at the code, play around with it a little bit. And we, the, op the objective, the exercise is try to to make the uh, secret box action and try to reproduce these states, right? So I have here, we'll have here a Rails application uh, and we'll create a node server and that node server would take a parameter called speed if uh, that can be anything in reality, but we want that to represent the state of the application. If it is a, in the, the node that service, it is in a fast state or if is that in a slow state. Uh, in order to simulate um, multiple requests coming from our app, just like would be in a real world application, uh, whenever I hit some any point in the Rails app, I'll fire 10 requests to this node server and I'll sleep between every one of these requests, uh, sleep one second. So then we can have a little bit of like delay within the, the request and also like get time and uh, play around with the configs to, to get to, to see the circuit working. And we'll grab only the status of that request. In the side of like the node server, it is just a simple one, uh, which will delay the response anyway. And, but if we got a fast parameter, it will delay the, the request by 50 milliseconds. Otherwise, all the requests will be delayed by 200 milliseconds. And that's for simulating like uh, faster and a slower version of the API. So uh, if we were to run, for example, a request without any timeout and using this HTTP client and just getting that, that status, and uh, the answer that we'd get would be more like this. Uh, all the requests are successful because we don't have any timeout explicit, explicit set uh, in this client. So even though we sleep uh, within the request, they all went through well and yeah, it's a success. But if we add just this line, adding a timeout of 0 0.1, which, is mean, which means 100 milliseconds, uh, we'll get the error, right? And the error is HTTP timeout error. And what that means? That means that as we are creating this state, this, the API, and we don't pass any, the, we are not passing this speed as a fast, and we are setting the timeout explicitly to 100 milliseconds, that request is timeout because the delay is uh, 200 milliseconds by default. But yeah, and as you can see, uh, the, error, the error bubbles up and goes to the user. So we, we could also, um, for example, handle that error or maybe treat, um, I don't know, uh, try to provide a useful information. It depends on the objective or the way you, you want to, to handle these things. But anyway, it's kind of like the, the error bubbles up, right? Uh, so how can we introduce like the circuit breaker to start working with it and actually see the, the how this circuit breaker fits it here. 
uh, I've created this class that will just encapsulate the, so you could uh, create creation logic and uh, the fire up of the, the request. So in order to use the circuit breaker, and once you got, we got the James told, you can reference it by like calling circuit box and calling the circuit. Uh, and you provide a name for that circuit. So that name is useful because it will associate all the requests that goes through this circuit, this instance of the circuit, and it will associate to, to that specific uh, request that we are doing. For example, I called here node client, but I, I could do that by every request. So uh, every request, uh, the secret keeps track of all the, the, the failed states for that uh, set of requests that uh, API call that we are looking for. And the way we configure the secret breaker, in the, in the case of like the secret box, uh, it is providing uh, an exceptions array. So this tells, uh, tells the, the secret box that you should look at these exceptions. So you should count these, the occurrence of these exceptions. Uh, and for, for her, us here in this case, we are interested in the timeout error one that we got from our client. So it depends on the implementation of the circuit pattern. Uh, some implementations would not require any exceptions. Uh, so they would potentially um, uh, handle every exception. But for example, here, if, the, if we got, for example, a 400, a bad request on an unauthorized error, uh, the secret will not take the, that failure in account into the error uh, rate and threshold. So we are just looking at, for example, timeout um, error. Uh, and when we actually fire the request, we wrap it around the secret uh, run, and that that will do it. They'll make sure that we keep track on whatever this line declined. The, the call that we are doing uh, returns, right? If I raise something, what is the error raised and whatnot. And there are some configurations that drives the default behavior of that, that circuit. Uh, this leap window, which is the amount of time that this, the circuit stays open, and by default is 90 seconds. Uh, there is also a time window, which is like the length interval that the circuit will look back and say, and calculate the error rate for that time window. There's also a threshold. So a volume threshold, how many requests do we require at least to, to in order to calculate that uh, error rate? For example, if we have one, just one request, maybe not interested in, to, to do anything at all. So, and, and it's defaults to five requests. And finally, we have the error rate or error threshold uh, which defaults to 50%. Uh, so whatever we, we reach um, half of the request failing, uh, it will uh, flip the secret and open it. So if we were to use that um, setup and query uh, API, node API, passing like the fast mode of API, API, we would see that all the requests uh, are 200. So it's the same output as we had before but we got something different here in the logs. So the actual um, um, output of the circuit is represented here in the logs. So it uh, outputs uh, when it's doing a query and the state of the circuit. So it says here, uh, the circuit's closed, it's querying that client, the node client, for example, and says here like the query was a success. And that's for all, the, all, all of our requests, right? And that's uh, really good because it tells us the story and on what's happening uh, is already a, a good information about our system. If we then uh, get rid of the fast mode and just query that uh, the all the requests should time out, right? And the result is no for all the requests. So that's the default value. So whenever like we we get an error that it, we track with the circuit breaker it will return no for that, um, for that answer response. Uh, and also uh, the logs here tell, tells us that this tall of the, the story of like the failed state. So it starts like green and it detects uh, a bunch of failures here. 
And then at some point, the error rate is calculated. It's above 50% and it opens the secret. So it says here, skipping node client, uh, opening the secret and all the subsequent queries are skipped. So it stops like querying the system and it's really great. So it, it's, we are seeing that uh, the, the secret opens, right? So let's tweak a little bit, just the configurations. So then we try to simulate um, trying to reach back. Cause like the defaults are too long, right? It's 50, um, it, leaves, it sleeps for a minute and a half and, uh, and it's, the sleep window is 60 seconds. So let's try to, to uh, create some short uh, uh, configurations so we can fast the and get a faster feedback on what is happening. So if you are setting the timeout, for example, for five time window actually for five seconds, then we will look at always the last five seconds. Uh, if we set the volume threshold for two, uh, we will be looking at at least two requests in order to calculate the error rate. And finally, if we override the sleep window for two seconds as well, it will just sleep for and skip all the requests within two seconds. So this is like the way you provide uh, these overloads to the secret box and you can have the, all the uh, overloads uh, of the default configurations uh, in when you uh, create that uh, instance of the secret. You can also, for example, uh, provide a, a different logger and also other configurations that you look you can look at in the repo. Uh, right. So if we do that now and request the the node server within that uh, slow mode, the answers are the same. But we'll see looking at the logs uh, a different story right so if we see like the first three requests are failed and then at this point we have enough uh, consider of our volume threshold which was two and then all the all of these three failed which is above 50 percent then the secret opens much faster than before right and then it remains open for a couple of uh, seconds actually two and it is skipping all, all the requests the sleep window expires and tries to reach back to the service. So you can see here in the secret box, for example, there is no half open. It essentially closes the secret, tries to make the request again, which is done here. And then it, as is a, a failed, is a failed uh, request, detects that we, the system was not recovered and open it again. Then we kind of like uh, saw the, the, this, the, the secret going from like close to open, trying to open it, trying to get to close again. But yeah, it was not, it didn't work. Didn't work because uh, our, we are always passing this, uh, the, we are always creating in, in the slow mode. So let's tweak that a little bit. So, you know, when I do it, I'm doing 10 requests in sequence. Let's say after the fourth one, uh, we ignore whatever we had in the speed and we always say we want the fast response. We want the fast mode. So what's going to do? What's, what is that going to do? The objective here is to try to simulate the recovery of our system. So same thing that we, have, we had before. In the first three requests, all failed and the error was calculated. We have uh, at least two uh, requests is above 50% the secret opens. So even though at some point here, like in the, in the fifth request, uh, we will be querying in the fast mode because we just tweaked uh, the way we pass the parameter a little bit. Uh, all the subsequent uh, queries are being skipped. So we don't do any query at all. Uh, and then by the end of the sleep window, uh, it expires and it closes the secret and tries to, to create the service again. This time though, as we are passing the, fa the fast parameter, the query will succeed and the, the secret will remain closed. So this kind of like closes the loop of all possible states of the secret breaker. Uh, and that's, that's really cool because we, we, we can see that results are different, but also we can see the states 
and what is happening, what is happening with our application and our requests in the logs. So that's pretty usable. So let's let's um, just go through a different example. Uh, it's kind of like a a metaphor, not not a metaphor, uh, an analogy with an example that I had before. But suppose you have an app. Uh, in this case, this app uh, builds a very specific and very um, personal map for you, and it gathers information from various different servers, like, for example, a service that provide places, a service that provide government uh, 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 places, and another one that provides shows. Uh, we could have also like a service that provide pictures, whatever. And in order to render that map, uh, we would create all these service and provide this, that rich map for the user, providing the optimal answer, right? Uh, without questioning whether or not that's the that's a well-designed uh, application that would create everything and return at once. Um, if we would depend that, uh, for example, in one of the applications, for example, say the government is down, uh, our main application would suffer uh, because of just on one, one of the APIs in reality. And it may be down just because of one of these APIs. But an interesting um, property of this system is that we could return a suboptimal uh, and partial state for that, and we could provide that. And if it had the circuit um, breaker in place, uh, the circuit will only will simply open for that uh, API that's not working well, and then skips all the requests, and we'll always be treating uh, and returning something to our users. So it's a much better state than like a degraded state that we have that we would have in a normal scenario. So this is kind of like another uh, practical or maybe another way that we could leverage on the secret pattern as well. So just uh, to wrap up some conclusions, the secret breaker is a pattern that helps us to keep our systems operating or partially operating if we if we can do that. Uh, and then the idea is, is stop pursuing unresponsive service and get back in there, get back query then just when they are healthy, right? And we manage to make our applications more resilient because then we fall gracefully and we fall, fail fast as well. Uh, and there are a lot of implementations available for us to plug and play. And in the end, it also requires a little bit of fine tuning because then maybe um, the sleep window, the error threshold, uh, the volume of uh, requests that we need to calculate the error threshold it will always depend on the application needs and the way uh, it is configured and the way the, the application requires uh, some, some sort of uh, behavior or, or in whatnot. Uh, and that's it. That's all I had for today. Thanks.